So here we have a tiny planet, and this is a photogrammetry model which has been essentially wrapped into the shape of a sphere, and I've added some lights and effects. In this example I'm using a Google Maps 3D capture, but you could use your own model instead, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can make it. Okay, so I've got my Google Maps uh, 3D model here inside of Blender, and if you want to know how to make this, I'll link to a previous video that I made which shows you how it can be captured from Google Maps. But it doesn't have to be a Google Maps capture, it could be your own photogrammetry, your own 3D model, anything, as long as it's got enough detail. And what we need to do first of all is we need to adjust this a little bit so that it's centered to the world and to itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type F3 and I'm going to search for SOTG and I'm going to set the origin to the geometry and I'm going to choose this um, specific option here which is bounds center and that's going to put the origin of the object in the center of the bounds of the object and next I'm going to go over to the item properties if you don't see these you can press the end panel here and I'm going to set the location uh, values to zero so I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to set all of those to zero at the same time and that's going to put the object in the middle of the world and then finally in case these values aren't set to 1, I'm going to apply the transforms. So I'm going to press Control A and I'm going to go to all transforms and this will apply all the transforms and you should see the location set to 0, the rotation set to 0 and the scale set to 1. So now our object is kind of ready to work with. So with this process ideally you'd have a, a Google Maps capture that had an aspect ratio of about 2 to 1. As you can see I have something that's closer to a ratio of 1 to 1 though it's not exactly. And I'm going to show you a little trick that we can do in order to um, adapt this existing capture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an empty object um, with my cursor placed at 0. If your cursor isn't at 0 you can press shift C. And it will go to zero. I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to add an empty object, plain axes. And we're going to use this in a minute. So next I'm going to select my capture. I'm going to go to the modifiers panel. I'm going to add a new array modifier. And you can see that that instantly fixes the ratio problem. It gives us more like a two to one because it, it duplicates the object. But we do get a kind of unusual seam here down the middle. So what you can do is you can enable object offset here. You can expand that and choose the empty object as the offset. And then what you can do is you can click on the empty object and set the X scale to minus one. What that will do is it will mirror the capture along this X axis. So you get this kind of interesting um, ur like kaleidoscopic urban scale effect, which is quite effective actually at mirroring the um, terrain. So now we have an aspect ratio that we can um, work with nicely for making our sphere. I'm going to rename this one to uh, mirror. Um, I'm also going to call our collection, uh, which I call it tiny planet. Um, and then I'm going to add a, another empty in the same position as the last one. So again, if your cursor isn't in the middle, press Shift C and it should go to the middle. So I'm going to add another empty object, plain axes. And for this one, we need to make sure that the Y axis is facing upwards. So I'm going to go over here to the viewport display settings for the new empty object. And I'm going to turn on axes. And you can see that Z is pointing up now. So I'm going to rotate by pressing R, X, and then uh, I'm going to type in 90. And that's going to make the y-axis face upwards um, and this is what we're going to use for the spherical deformation so I'm going to call this sphere deformation great and now what we can do is we can click back again on the capture I'm going to minimize this array modifier and I'm going to add a new simple deform modifier I'm going to set it to bend and I'm going to choose the um, sphere deformation object as the starting point and you can see it starts to curve up in this kind of um, halo world or um, inception style world and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the angle to minus 180 and you can see that that turns it into a kind of barrel vaulted half cylinder shape which we can uh, start to work with there and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, another simple deform modifier and I'm going to again use the same sphere deformation object and I'm, this time I'm going to choose the z-axis uh, and you can see initially that goes quite crazy because I haven't set it to bend I've set it to bend um, but now it's creating a kind of um, section of a torus um, a toroidal world um, but if I set this instead to minus 360 I can turn it into a sphere which is nice we've got the kind of like basic sphere shape there but what we want to do is also make this uh, centered into the middle of the world so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another empty 
um, and I'm going to call this one parent, because it's going to be the parent of all of the others. Um, I'm going to go into the side view by pressing on the Y axis here, and I'm going to move the parent object down there into the middle of the sphere. So I'm just moving that on the Z axis. You can also use this widget here to help move it down. And it should be sitting kind of in the middle of the sphere. So you should see the X and the Y values is, uh, are at zero, and then the Z value is at something else. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my other all my other objects, so the um, original capture, the mirror, and the sphere deformation, and I'm going to click and drag and hold down shift, and I'm going to drop them onto the parent object. And that's going to make the parent the parent of those objects. So now if I move the parent around, the others follow. And what I can do is just select the parent object and then set all of its transforms to zero. And then also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees. So that we have, so we can have the world rotating like this, which is gonna look quite nice. So there we go, that's that bit set up. And you'll notice that if I try to rotate this, it's very laggy. So what I'm instead going to do is turn off this collection and then instance the collection using the collection instance. So I press Shift A, collection instance, and then I'm going to choose that collection that's turned off Tiny Planet. And now you can see that if I try and transform it, it performs nicely. Um, I'm not sure exactly why, but you may notice here that the world is slightly, uh, slightly oblate spheroid. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it on the Z plane by pressing S and then Shift Z, and then I'm going to set a value of something like 0.95 and that to me looks a bit more spherical. So with my side view enabled here, I'm gonna press, I can press on the Y button here. I'm going to uh, add a uh, camera object. So I'm gonna go Shift A, add camera, and then I'm gonna go to view, align view, align active camera to view. And that's gonna put the camera where my view was there. And you can also see that my aspect ratio is a little bit incongruent with the shape of the tiny planet. So I'm going to change it to 2048 by 2048. And I'm also going to change the uh, focal length of the camera to 35. So it's a little bit different. I'm going to set the X value to zero, the Z value to zero. I'm gonna move it along the Y axis just so that it fills the frame and so that the buildings kind of stick out nicely. The next thing I'm going to do is um, set up the lighting. So I'm going to go over here to the EV preview. I'm going to add a sunlight object. I'm going to rotate it a little bit so that it's just illuminating the top from an angle. I'm going to set the value intensity quite high. I'm going to set it to 10. And I'm also going to make this background black. And the way I'm going to do that is using the compositor. But first, I'm going to go over here to the render properties and I'm going to set the film value to transparent. So we have a transparent background. Then I'm going to go over to the compositing tab. I'm going to enable use nodes. I'm going to move this up a little bit and I'm going to change this to a 3D viewport so we can see what's going on in real time. So we have real time 3D compositor previews now in Blender. So I'm going to turn on the always setting here. And so this will allow us to see the results of whatever we do in this node tree. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use an alpha over node and I'm going to use that to move this noodle down here and set the background to black and that sets the background to black without changing the intensity. Um, I'm also going to change the um, saturation of the world to something like 1.25 just so we get a little bit of like nice bright colors here and I'm also going to add a glare node which is going to add a little bit of streaky highlights on the bits that are most well illuminated. So you can see there that we've got it nicely lit up. Um, and now if I go back over to my layout option and turn on the always setting for the compositor, you can see that the compositor settings are visible. Um, so now what we want to do is make it spin around. So I'm going to click on my tiny planet object and I'm going to click on the Z rotation value. And I'm just going to type in a little Python expression, which is hash frame divided by 500 and now if I press play here you'll see that it starts to spin round slowly and you can also see that if I change that to a lower number it spins around faster because we're dividing the frame value by less and if I change it to a higher number it turns around more slowly so you can play around with these and adjust them as you want but the nice thing is that that little expression will keep it rotating forever so I can turn up my um, frame range to something a bit higher like 500 for instance and then we'll have a slightly longer animation working for us. You can see that the shadows here are a little bit glitchy so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my 
shadow settings and I'm going to change the cube size to 4096 and the cascade size to 4096 that makes them a little bit more stable you might also want to go over to your sun object go to the shadows and change contact shadows turn that on so you get a little bit more detailed shadowing happening and the final thing that I want to do is add a little bit of depth of field to this so I'm going to select my camera um, I'm going to enable depth of field here I'm going to set it to quite a low value which is 0.02 and you can see that that goes very blurry because the depth of field is set very close to the camera. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the focus distance to something where the world is in focus. About there, perhaps. Yeah, that looks quite nice. And so we've got you know some bits that are out of focus, some bits that are in focus. But we get this kind of like nice overall um, effect with like a little bit of glare. And that's how you can set up a tiny planet in Blender.